All right, everybody. I know it's been a while since we have a chance to to meet as a class, but I just wanted to go ahead and get into chapter two. Uh, we're going to talk about the limitations on criminal law. So we already talked about the basic setup of criminal law as far as our system, um, everybody's particular role in it, how the court systems are designed. So going forward from that, let's. there's going to be a little bit uh, that we're still going to cover in that sense, but then I want to get into the more specifics as in, as you can read here, the, you know, the actual limitations, um, uh, speaking more broadly as opposed to just simply in court, you know, how does that apply? Okay. So uh, some different authority, you know, you guys, I'm sure you have learned or you should have learned by now. Uh, if you had your, if you want to say government uh, classes, some of them call them civics, whatever, uh, learn three different branches of government. Uh, we call it separation of powers and there's kind of a different multiple ways of doing that. So you, know, you have your legislative, your executive, and then your judicial branches. So as you can read there, legislative always makes laws. Uh, this is stuff that should be a review. Your executive is the one that actually executes or enforces laws. Um, and that, that's where essentially we are a part of that. We are in essence a, um, an arm of the executive branch of government, okay? Uh, and then once someone, if we arrest someone or they had to show up in court for some type of citation or something on those lines, like a fine, um, then that's whenever they get involved with the judicial process. But the judicial aspect is only the interpretation. That's a problem we've run into more recently uh, in history is, I say recently, probably since uh, about the, you're going to see a lot more of it, uh, say we saw some of it occurred during the 60s, um, mid to late 60s, early 70s, and then kind of receded and then went back to where it was supposed to be, which is interpretation. However, more so in the last probably 10 to 15 years, we've been seeing a, uh, a change in that to where you're seeing more judges go beyond what they're uh, designed to go. You know, as far as the way the government was designed, judges were not uh, originally given the idea or given the freedom to come up with new laws. And that's kind of what they're trying to do is use case law, though it can be used as precedents. You know, we talked about that before. Uh, but the problem with it is now we see a lot of judges who are trying to affect laws simply by their own rulings. And that's, that's going to get in some dangerous uh, territory as opposed to letting the legislative branch make the laws and simply interpreting those laws. So uh, moving forward, though, and we have a system of federalist, uh, federalist system, I should say. Federalism is, in essence, uh, breaking that up. So and what we have is, um, so the Constitution, a lot of people think that, oh, that's the law of the land, which is true. But it's the constitutional, uh, you know, Constitution as written applies to federal law. Now, each state has their own Constitution. Some of them don't call it a Constitution, but most of them do anymore. Uh, but nonetheless... You have a constitution that kind of governs and guides decisions for federal law, but then each state also has their own constitution. So federal law and amendments up through like the Bill of Rights, for example, only applied to federal uh, law itself. Like So um, if something happened on a state level, up until the 14th Amendment, the, you weren't necessarily protected um, by the you know, Bill of Rights, for example. Uh, the Constitution still applies, but Bill of Rights, for example, until the 14th Amendment came about, didn't apply to states, whereas, like I said, we'll, we will read and you'll learn about some of that as we go forward. Um, but there are also, as you can read here, there are other authorities that have been granted to the states. And that's where, once you get past the federal offenses, federal requirements, things like that, then it becomes the job of the state to determine if I live in a particular state, let's just say I was a legislator in the state of Indiana, I still have authority to decide what's going to be legal in my state. Uh, I can't have something that is, um, I'm not supposed to put that way, have laws that uh, contradict federal law. I'm also not supposed to have any that are more lenient than federal law. That's where it gets interesting whenever we talk about things like um, the legalization of marijuana, for example, has occurred in uh, multiple states, but how how have we allowed that to happen 
when it's an actual federal offense. So that's something that is unique to think about. Uh, same thing goes with uh, illegal immigration in sanctuary cities or sanctuary states in some cases. Uh, and that's some, actually something we're seeing uh, a new form of sanctuary states um, is going to be occurring and has more to do with the Second Amendment, though. Uh, for example, Texas is considering itself a sanctuary state for Second Amendment. It's a federal law or federal uh, government decides to try to take away some of your Second Amendment rights. Um, so that being said, I don't want to spend too much time about that. We can talk about that in class when we get together again. Uh, but for right now, I just want to kind of focus on what we're doing here. So in essence, the question is how are we a cooperative uh, federalistic nation? It's because what we have the states that uh, decide their own laws, but a lot of them are very similar. And there is a uh, connection or uh, there has to be some type of cooperation between the federal level and also state levels. They may be, you know, every state's a little different, but federally there is some continuity, some uh, aspect of uniform government. Okay. That's all we're getting at. Uh, okay. And you guys can read this. this. And I kind of alluded to the interesting part of this um, as far as federal uh, and state if they're in opposition, which one supersedes the other? It's typically the federal. I shouldn't say typically. It is supposed to be the federal supersedes uh, state. However, like I said, with uh, certain laws, you're seeing that kind of go by the wayside or at least be ignored. Okay. It's politically driven usually. Okay. So, um, all right. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, legality. Uh, this is real, real simple. I won't spend a lot of time on it. Basically, it's saying that in order for something, for someone to be convicted of a crime, or at least even be charged with a crime, there has, you have to meet these guidelines. You have to meet, there is a specific uh, legislation that makes that particular activity, whether it's a failure to do something or a requirement to do something, uh, there has to be something that makes, you know, it's a prohibition, something that makes it illegal, right? Has to be some type of punishment involved, okay? Those are really, really basic. Um, Otherwise, there's no really point in it. Um, here is something I think is really interesting with the principle of lenity. Um, lenity can be complicated. As for this class, I'm going to try to make it fairly simple and not go into the uh, weeds with it. Is essentially what it comes down to is a law must be specific enough to read and interpret. Um, and this will, will this will get us into uh, void, uh, you know, void for vagueness. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later, probably another video. But what we're talking about here, principle of lenity, basically says if there is a part of a statute that is vague or doesn't really cover that very well, doesn't give a good definition to what uh, to what we're looking for, or especially the incident at, at hand. Okay, and it's hard to give an example because there's um, it's rare, but it does happen sometimes where you'll have a, uh, a particular incident where what the person actually did doesn't necessarily fit the law because the law was so, it was written broadly. Okay. And there wasn't real good definition to it. Um, and that's the problem is if you can't with uh, substantive criminal law, you need to have elements of a crime. It's almost like, you know, boom, boom, boom. These are the points that you meet. Um, did you, uh, for example, we're talking about burglary. Okay. Um, did you go, go on to or into someone's, uh, residence with the intent uh, to commit a felony? And did you commit a felony while you were in their residence, uh, illegally? Okay. Those are things that would constitute burglary. Um, however, if the law was written as such that you couldn't tell what the true elements were, you know, clearly, uh, that's when you run into Lindy. It's not clear. So therefore, just remember that the principle of lenity is anytime there is confusing or vague language in a law, it is to be read in the favor of, uh, of the defendant. Okay. So. We'll just look at that. Uh, think about it that way. Equal protection. This is one that I'll probably have to make a separate video for. 
uh, but I do want to try to have a little uh, kind of rundown for it before we get rolling into it too much. It's kind of like a preview. So equal protection, there's the idea of what the true definition says, which is what we have here written here, and then a concept of what people think equal protection is or how it's worked out. So as you can read here, I'm going to go ahead and, and talk about it. I'm going to break it down a little bit. Um, you know, it says all persons born or naturalized in the United States can be subject uh, to the jurisdiction thereof. Okay, so within the United States, anybody who is born or been naturalized, meaning at the time born somewhere else, come comes here and um, starts a life and can gain citizenship. Okay, uh, whether it be any more, it'd be through either a visa or ultimately becoming a U.S. citizen. Um, but anyone who is could be considered through a visa or through uh, through actual citizenship and paperwork like that, who could be considered a citizen uh, of the United States falls under this protection, right? Uh, falls under, but if you're not a U.S. citizen, you aren't necessarily given the, that's a, a mistake people make, like, oh, well, illegals should be given rights just the same as everybody else. Well, the problem with illegals or anybody else, it doesn't have to be just that, but someone who's visiting here doesn't have the same rights as a, U.S. citizen because that person is not a U.S. citizen, all right? So, um, okay, just because I go to, to your house to visit, that does not make me uh, an owner or a, uh, or a resident of your particular home, right? So I may be a visitor, but I am not a resident or a permanent resident of, of that household, right? So, um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm honestly not sure how I'm doing on time, so I've got to check that. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going uh, through the rest of this, and then we'll get started on a new video. But uh, it says here, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall bridge or take away the privileges or immunities of a citizen of the United States. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. can't take away those laws, although sometimes government tries, all right? Um, nor shall any state, and this is, when they use the word state, and you have to be careful about how you read it, because sometimes they, they do mean states like Indiana, Illinois, whatever, and sometimes they simply mean the government. But in this case, um, because it is a 14th Amendment, it did apply to states, meaning like Illinois or Indiana, or all 50 of them, okay? Um, but no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property, okay? Got those pretty clear without due process of the law. Hence where we get uh, procedural law, due process, everything that someone is allowed once we, once they come into contact with the criminal justice system, okay? Um, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction, within that state, the equal protection of the laws, right? Can't base it on uh, sex, gender, or race, um, age, religion, any of those things. Right, so I think we're pretty clear on that. Um, so I think I want to kind of pause there before we start with a, a video and pick up from, from that point. But I just want to kind of give us the foundation to go off of. So I'll be seeing you in a, a video here soon.